What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Boo, and I am back for another gameplay. Today, we're going to be checking out Parasite in Love. This is a game that is um, it's an animated game. It's kind of got anime-type vibes to it. Um, so I'm definitely excited to get on into it. So without further ado, let's get into the game. Let's get into the vibes. So, okay, I guess we're going to go start off with that new infection. Let's go. A rare infection from a brain-eating emboa is being blamed for the death of North Carolina man. He was swimming in a water park earlier this month. The emboa is usually found in shallow fresh waters. It can cause several headaches, fever, nausea, and vomiting, which can progress into having a stiff neck, seizures, and a coma. It's only infectious when water is forced up the nose during activities such as diving and water skiing. According to the Center of Disease Control, the CDC, the Embroa is rare but overwhelmingly deadly. In the last 57 years, there have only been 145 known infections, but of those, only four survived. The CDC says the illness is particularly difficult to treat because it is notoriously hard to detect and progressively so and progressive and progresses so quickly. The next time you go swimming, wear nose plug and avoid activities that involve being fully submerged in freshwater areas. This is Gabe Stewart in BS. Over now. All right. Oh gosh, day one. I feel a rush of happiness as you continue your hike because you hear nothing but nature around you. Birds are chirping, the wind is rustling through the branches, through the tree branches, and water is tripping nearby. It is so peaceful compared to your busy office that is currently far, far away from you. The hundreds of emails you get as a project manager can wait until you return from your vacation. All right, I'll do with that. You finally arrive at the lake. The photos you looked through online couldn't convey the beauty of this place. You're so glad to stop here before entering the cabin you rented for a little bit for your little vacation. Time to swim as a reward. No. The hours you spent hiking make your dip in the water all the more refreshing. Waves of relief wash over you as you swim around and after a while you let yourself float and enjoy the moment. You close your eyes and your breathing slow, slows. The sun heats up your face while the water cools your back. You hear a scream and a wave pushes you to the side. You stabilize yourself, coughing and splurring for air, trying to clear water from your mouth and nose. Oh gosh, not the mouth and nose. A boy laughs as he bobs upright next to you. He smiles brightly without a care in the world. Mallow? I guess Marlow? Be careful, you could have heard us both. But nothing happened. My mother calls for him and he swims away. As he steps out of the water, his mother already has a towel in hand and dries his hair. You are little, en you are little envious. Clumsy with your words outside of work, you have a hard time connecting more with people you love. Your friends and family do 
do like to spend time with you, but you sometimes feel lacking when you try to show them the same affection. Maybe you would have an easier time if you had a family of your own. Your friends did tell you that her instincts as a new mother helped immensely in taking care of her baby. You hope that in your case, the instincts would take over in, taking, in talking to your child. How great would it be to have such a deep connection? You sigh and rise from the lake. You arrive in the cabin and you have a book for the next two weeks. The space is too big for just one person but also feels luxurious to have such, so much space for yourself. You basically checking this place out as a vacation home for the future family that you always dreamed of. Okay. Even if you don't have a partner, the thought of taking a trip together fills you with joy. By the fireplace, you look at the couches where you could snuggle with your future family. You smile, imagining your child imitating a bear as they wear the fur that drapes over one of their cushions, one of the cushions. You stretch your arms as you yawn. Time to unpack and get settled. You put your hand into your bag and take out your vacuum sealed clothes. You pack them this way to make space for other things. Your wallet, smartphone, food, toiletries, and some books to pass the time. After putting all your stuff away, you go and take a shower. Half an hour later, you leave the bathroom refreshed and donning a white robe provided by the rental. Walking to the couches with a grin and a glass of white wine. Hmm, relaxing. Now this feels like a true vacation. Hmm. You have messages from your dad, mom, coworkers, and friends. What does dad say? Your dad always sends short messages like cloud with a photo of sky attached. You must have inherited this blunt way of words. Okay, let's see, co-worker. You immediately regret looking at this. Okay, let's see, mom. She likes to nag and remind you to do things even though it's been years since you moved out. It can be annoying, but you know she's doing it with love. Marlo, when are you coming home? You can't just leave for months, my dear. I bet you need some fresh vegetables from our garden, too. <laughs> Gosh, mother. I'm okay. <clears throat> you sigh. It's, got, it's gotten so much harder to meet up since your friends group became adults. Okay, so yeah, everybody's growing up, so they're getting their own families, their own lives. So when are we going out on a trip? We've been trying to organize this for years. Let's at least try to make plans by the end of this year. What are you saying? Okay, we got photos. Your mother sent you some digital copies of old fashioned photos. When you were little, your family used to visit the big greenhouse in the city center quite often. There are also some photos of you with co-workers. When did you take these selfies with them? You might have gotten drunk at the last office party. Any milestone has to be celebrated is the motto of your boss. So parties happen often, pretty often. You don't know how your boss is able to make the company pay for so many, but you don't care, you don't dare to ask him. You scroll further back and finally find some photos with your friends. The last time you guys met was to say goodbye to a friend in the group who was leaving the country. 
You should call them sometime soon. Alright, you got and decide to go to bed. Day two. The sun warms your cheek and birds chirp as you wake up. What a peaceful morning. It's been a while since you slept this well. You check your phone and notice that you've gotten messages from your dad. Attached to the photo of a flower he saw on his way to work, it brightens your day whenever he does this. <laughs> you want to send him a photo back. You decide that today you'll explore the surroundings, take pictures, and make some bookmarks with flowers you find. After a quickly, quick breakfast, shower, changing of clothes, you are ready. Once you're outside, you take a deep breath. You can smell the damp moss, flowers, and wet grass. It must have rained a little during the night. You take your smartphone out and you start your hike. Your shoes sink every time you take a step on the pine needle cone. As you look around, the wind caresses and leaves above you, making their shadows dance on the ground. Soon you spot a small purple flower growing nestled between fallen trunks of trees. Tree trunks. <laughs> you spot down and take a picture close up. Up close. You start proudly at your photo and do drop on one of the petals reflects the sunlight, making the scene feel more magical. You stand up and send it to your dad, or at least you try to. You see your bad reception and give it another attempt, but it doesn't go through. You decide to send it once you have a better connection in the cabin. Then you look at the flower again. Upon further thought, they would be pretty, they would be a pretty decoration for a bookmark when dried. You carefully pick one and make your way back. After you put your bag away, you fold a sheet of papers around the flower and tuck it inside a book. And press the book shut, then stack several more books on top of it. That should make it flat and dry after a while. Then you remember to send the photo. Your dad just answered with, nice. Then seconds later, he sends a photo back. <laughs> you chuckle. You used to make them when you were young. A new wooden toy. I miss you, Dad. You shake your head, a little embarrassed after those words escaped your mouth. Somehow, you can't bring yourself to send those words. <laughs> Why? You can be open. I know you feel like you've grown, but you can still be open with your the Dad. You just write nice back. <laughs> After a long bowl of bath, you are ready to prepare your dinner. You cut the meat on the chopping board almost in a rhythmic fashion. After a while of only, taking, only eating takeout, it feels good cooking for yourself again. <laughs> are you cooking? It looks good. You let go of your knife too fast and it clatters onto the counter. You whip your head around. No one was there, but you had clearly heard a voice. So you move around the cabin, peeking into each corner, corridor, but you find no sign of anyone else in the house. Still anxious, you go back to the kitchen. You start the stove and sear the meat in the pan. The fat 
glistens and the smell makes your mouth water. You almost forget the previous strange incident. Hungry, impatient, you grab the fork and tear into the meat. It's still a little rare and bloody. You enjoy the flavor and relax, feeling the stress from earlier leave your body, putting the old incident behind you, the odd incident behind you, and you're still able to find some enjoyment today. Okay. Day three. The morning alarm almost gives you a heart attack. With half shut eyes, you search for your phone and hastily turn off the alarm. You sit up and massage your temples. It's been a while since you've had a headache this bad. Sluggishly, you crawl out of bed and make your way to the kitchen. You brew some tea in hopes that it will help and take and take it with you to the living room. You are, you are feeling off because of the hike you did, or it's the rare meat. Several hours later, you breathe heavily as you lean against the cold white ceramic of the toilet. The last time you had to vomit was after the last office party. After securing a multi-million dollar deal for the company. The constant flow of alcohol was the only thing making the loud music bearable. But the next morning you had such a hangover from hell, you can't remember such much else. Check the kitchen for bad food. Okay. You know you bought the food just before your hike, but you can't help but suspect that something you ate might have gone bad. No, not the bread or anything else in the kitchen. It's all fresh. Was it really food poisoning? Could it be some suppressed stress from work finally resurfacing? Or was it too much sun after being held up in an office for so long. You grab your phone and sit down on the on a couch. You decide to research some more with your phone and open your browser in order to look up your symptoms. Um, I don't know what his symptoms are. The results suggest vomiting might have been caused by an infection, food poisoning, motion sickness, brain injury, or migraines. If it lasts more than two days, you should call the doctor. Okay, am I still looking at more? Um, <laughs> Maybe you should call the doctor now. Just when you are about to type in a number, your hand seizes up. Your phone falls onto the couch. What? What was that? You hesitate. You drop your phone from little muscle cramp. You've had those before. Whatever bug you've caught will probably pass by tomorrow morning. You get yourself some tea, a slice of toast, and rest for the day. Day five. You sleep through the entire day, but you still feel weak when you wake up. Oh, well, 
This is not going good. I'm trying to tell you. Let me see something. Okay. You sleep through the entire day, but you still feel weak when you wake up the next morning. Okay, let's, let's continue this. You drink some tea and wonder if you should eat something, but you decide it would probably be better to wait, wait it out until tomorrow and give your stomach some time to rest. Okay. It would be a waste of food if you had to throw up again. I guess that's true. You drag yourself to the fireplace and make a fire. You make yourself comfortable on the couch and watch the flames. They sway from left to right, and if you aren't careful, you can get lost in their hip hypnotic dance. You start to feel lonely. Even as you enjoy looking at the flames, you miss your mother's kitchen soup that she cooks whenever you got sick. You snuggle even deeper into the blankets. Why did you have to get sick all, all alone out in the woods? Your mind drifts off and you look around the room in the daze. Is the room getting bigger? Maybe you just imagined it. <laughs> it's all right. I knew. Force yourself up and see the fireplace poker, <laughs> Brandish, brandishing it in front of you while you search for the source of the voice. You could have sworn it was right next to you, but there's no one else in this room. After what the other day, after what happened the other day, you checked as much. Of course, you're the only one here right? You back into a corner or at least you aren't ambushed from behind. Then you take out your phone to try to call for help. No. No. Oh. Mm. An intense pain swells up in your head. Mm. You jolt in pain and let go of your phone. It hits the ground, bounces once, then falls flat. You tremble as you kneel down to retrieve it. You sigh when you see that your phone is still intact. Okay, whatever just made it persist knowing, whatever just made it presence known seems like it doesn't want you to call for help. You don't care. Your thumbs hover over the dial pad. You're going to make that call. That won't help. You nearly throw your phone out of fear, but you stop yourself in time. You only feel a little pain. Tears roll down your cheeks. You hate this voice. It's swimming in your head. It's seizing up your hand. It's like it's controlling you no no now you sound delusional what voice you mean thinking right that's what everyone does you're just fighting your own intuition aren't you you close your phone and just go to bed you hope this ends soon mm, gosh i don't know Day six. You open your eyes, you're not sure of what you're looking at. Colors, patterns. Why can't you focus? Good morning. Panic floods your body. There at the foot of your, your bed grins a ghoulishly colored man. Who is he? How did he break in? You snatch a nearby pillow and throw it at the intruder, but it sails right through him. You stare in sheer disbelief. Are you a ghost? No, no. 
I am a living being. We met in the lake. I was looking for a place to multiply and you were just so warm and so nourishing, I couldn't resist. And finally, you can see me. He leans forward. <laughs> Hi. I'm a boa. I think you humans call me Agraria Flowery. So I'm starting to see things. I need help. Wait. Are you getting a doctor? Of course. So you're trying to get rid of me. You feel intense pain as a new wave send, sends you into agony. How could you? We need to stay together. Don't you understand? Okay, wait, wait, please calm down. I won't do it. Good. The pain disappears. You feel even weaker than before. Exhausted, you lay down on the bed. He's an emboa. He's in your head. And he sprouted more and more of him to root around in your brain. And the pain is killing you. Killing you. So wait, aren't I just going to die then? He doesn't answer immediately. Don't say it like that, Marlo. Isn't it wonderful we get to spend time together? You have had a hard time wrapping your head around the situation, but what you do know is you're having, you're in bad shape and this thing won't let you call for help. Did it have to did it have to be me? Wasn't there a better place for you? No, never. But of course it's rare for my kind to infect humans. But I see it as a sign. And you know what I saw when I got close in your brain? Your wish for family, is as strong as mine. He comes closer and puts his head on your stomach. This is where a baby would grow, right? He breathes in deeply. Is this how a fetus in the womb feels? Why would they even leave their mother's body? It's so warm and comfortable inside of inside you humans. Oh. A shudder runs through your body. You want to hit him and push him away, even though you know your hands would face through him. It makes this new family arrangement easier for you. To make this new family arrangement easier for you, I'll even let you call me Neo. Like your unrequited love from your university days. He can dig into your memories. Oh God, he can dig into your memories. I can offer you anything you could have, but always want it. Why are you frowning? Not happy? You put on a poker face. Who would have thought that your days dealing with three stockholders would come in handy for something like this? No, it sounds good. Really good. Right. But suddenly his smile fades. He stands up and looks at you with worry. You are getting weaker. 
and you were enjoying yourself so much too. It made me smile. What was that drink you had? White wine? Yes. I wish I could have had that with you. It's something you humans do with each other, right? Well, I guess we just have to take what we can. <sighs> Is there something we could do together? Oh, how about I sit with you at the dinner table? Is this him playing house with you? Of course, my dear. You shove down all the disgust you feel as fear has pushed you to say this phrase. Neil blinks in surprise. Then he smiles at you in pure bliss. <laughs> oh God, now I'm all flustered. Let's go then, after you. You walk into the kitchen while Neil follows you. You can feel his gaze on you. Your hand reaches for the pantry, but Neil interrupts you. You can't just eat bread alone. You're already weak. You, uh, how about something more filling? I will try to lessen the nausea, so please, for us. You clench your fist that's rich coming from him. You turn to the fridge and take out some eggs. You're fine if I make some scrambled eggs, right? Yes, yeah, that sounds better. The pain and nausea have truly lessened. Seems like if you humor him, you can at least keep your head clear enough to think. You hear Neil hum as you crack open some eggs and turn on the stove. Curiosity gets the better of you and you get, and you glance at him as the eggs sizzle. He sits on a chair at the dining table, swaying left to right, happily waiting for you to finish cooking. What is this madness? <laughs> yes, what is this madness? Because this is getting crazy. This peaceful scene, universe, you more than anything, unnerves you more than anything. But you play along for now. After you choke some bites down, you lean forward in excitement. <laughs> it tastes better with some company, right? Absolutely, you're really sweet too. <laughs> he continues to hum. I'm happy that there are at least some things we can do together. Hmm, what else? Oh, is it possible for us to watch something together later? I saw glimpses of what it, what was it, movie dates in your memory. My phone is a little small for us to watch something together. Ah. Oh. Okay. With mixed feelings, you turn back to your plate, thankful he at least lets you eat in peace until you're finished. You clean up and begin to fidget as, you, as you're not sure how Neil wants to continue the day. Suddenly you get goosebumps and slump down. You have a wave of nausea surging through you. Oh no, I thought I could give you more time. Um, um, 
He reaches for your arm, but it goes through. I wish I could help you stand. After a few seconds of nausea dis dissipates, how can you survive this situation? What should you do? Is there a way to be rid of you? Let's get back to bed, right? You both shuffle back to the bedroom. You lay down in bed and Neil sits beside you. He strokes your hair as you gradually fall asleep. Day seven. Oh. You hardly slept and, st and still feel weak. Your neck is very stiff and the weird colors appear again before your eyes. Oh, you're awake. Good morning, dear. Oh, how many are there? You turn your head and see multiple meals next to your bed. You, suppre you suppress the urge to scream. <laughs> Here, I want to show you what our children inside you look like. There's even one that looks like you. Oh, here. He puts a glob of blue mass on your lap. The way it gurgles and cries, it sounds desperately like a human baby. It coughs and some blue spit runs down its cheeks. Isn't it cute? It's absolutely precious. You try to hug it, but you can't touch it. You are desperate to make him happy. I'm so glad you like it. It's our family after all. He takes the baby back. Come get breakfast once you're all ready. You seem weaker today, so I'll stay silent while you sleep a bit more, all right? You nod and lay down. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Your grumbling stomach won't shut up. While you walk to the kitchen, you assess your situation and try to think of a plan. Neil won't let you call a doctor nor other help. He loves acting like a husband to you. If you humor him, he will try to lessen the effects of the infection. But if he stays, you will certainly die. You arrive in the kitchen and Neil shows himself. So, you have enough shrimp to eat now. Great. How do I get out of this? Is there a way to somehow use his fixation on family against him? A slight headache interrupts your thoughts. What are you thinking so hard about? It's like something is moving around inside your head. What are you doing? I just want to know what you're thinking. You try your hardest to think of something positive about Neil. You can't risk him seeing what you truly think. A lovely day to spend with, <laughs> to spend with my Neil. <laughs> oh, you charm. He sounds absolutely delighted. The headache disappears and you sigh in relief. I think somewhere in your memories, it's said a little caffeine helps when you had a headache. Yeah, coffee sounds great right now. You put a kettle on and shake some instant coffee into a mug. You try to take then you take a yogurt cup from the fridge and get a spoon. 
Mill's eyes glimmer with excitement as if he expects you to do some magic trick. <laughs> Is yogurt good? Yes, it's sweet and cold and refreshing. After a while, you start to play with your spoon. Maybe it's better if you only eat a bit. You don't want to upset your stomach. Come on, eat a little more. We have more mouths to feed after all. Remind <laughs> the reminder makes you drop your spoon. What's wrong? Him, everything about him and what he does to you. <laughs> you stare at him with wide open eyes. You bite down hard on your lips to hold yourself back from giving him a piece of your mind. Are you angry? No, no, I know you're just worried. Well, we both want you to be healthy, right? So I'm allowed to worry about you, right? Sure. This is a nightmare. <laughs> the water is ready. You pour some into your mug. After adding some milk, you mix the coffee and drink it. Do you feel a little better? Yes. There's palpable tension between you two. Neil makes the first move, putting his hands on your shoulder. Here's this, here, this might cheer you up. You see blue shapes of glow and dance in the spaces between your hands. Do you like it? You slowly nod. Oddly, this beautiful dance in colors comforts you. It pains you that he seems to care despite being the cause of your suffering. Do you want to spend some time together in the living room? Maybe watch the fire in the fireplace. Maybe sleep will help. I hope we can do something together tomorrow, my love. Now let's go. He walks beside you as you go back to the bedroom. Tomorrow you have to get it, it together, no matter what it takes. I heard that. Day nine. This is... Mm. You wake up in your weakest state yet. Your skull feels fully full and ready to burst. Your heavy limbs struggle to move on command. Your breathing is dry and ragged. You're attacked with shivers and sweltering fever. Oh, you don't have much time left. You steal yourself and decide that you have to push through no matter how upset he gets. You have to at least try. You should have been trying, girl. You were stronger. In your dizzy state, you look up, and there he is. God. Hi. Good morning. You wish dearly that he would just leave your body. He acts like a husband and wants to be a father. What a disgusting display of this fake family. Wait, a father? Neil, I have a question. Yes? He strokes your hair as he speaks. How you wish you could smack his hand away. Why do you want to be a father? Hmm. Well, I sort of already am, right? I believe I'm pretty good at it. What? Well, at least not in the human sense. I mean, how could you have ever learned? if you had no one to teach you. Then tell me. Children take priority. You think I don't know that? 
how many of your decisions are for your own survival? How much of this is really for the survival of your children? Hmm. Good. It's getting insecure. You haven't really moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? Isn't it even too hard to talk now? How about I dig deeper and see for myself? You feel something pushing and pulling inside your head. Show your memory a relative who was struggling before their death. Maybe Neil will show you mercy. You are just exhausted at this point. Marlo, are you this tired? You nod. I beg you, make the pain stop. Neil looks over you with worry, pacing around the room. Chewing and fingernailing. Chewing a fingernail. <laughs> How about... He puts a hand on your forehead. Does this make you feel better? No. What are you trying to do? I saw a glimpse of your memories once you were little. I believe your mother did this for you when you were sick as well. <laughs> you... Silly you, I had a fever then, not an infection. How is this a laughing? Jill flashes across his face, but he shakes his head and affection returns to his gaze. I will think of you. I will think of a way. For now, sleep, my dear. With the last of your energy spent, you drift off into a deep slumber. Day 10. Oh, this can't be. Surprise, you're alive. Your breathing is shallow as you wake up in the bed. In the bed. <laughs> Patterns dance in front of your eyes, and you hear Neil humming. You know he's not real, but you still feel his warmth next to you. It is comforting. Are you scared? It doesn't matter anymore. All you know is that you're experiencing him. Hope is gone from your mind. You can't tell illusion from reality anymore. You turn your head towards Neil and try to focus your eyes on him. <laughs> oh, wow. He reaches out to you and caresses your hair. He must have turned and tossed around a lot in his sleep. The bed sheets are like a veil on him. Maybe this is the only way we can marry. I know we don't have a lot of time. I feel you getting weaker by the second. Don't worry. I am with you. Until death do us part. You feel him wrap you in his embrace. You never imagined that death would feel so warm. You slowly close your eyes and you hear more coming. The wedding march. All right, all right, that was Parasite in Love. Um, I don't know what to think of this game. This game was kind of off the chain. It was disturbing. Clearly, this was a parasite, and uh, this parasite was going to say whatever he had to say to keep his host 
uh, valuable, uh, valuable for him to utilize. So um, he did what he came there to do. I really enjoyed the game. It was definitely disturbing and creepy. I do not know if there are as many endings to this game. You guys can definitely let me know in the comment section or I can do a little bit more research on it. But we're going to just do one ending because this one ending definitely took a nice amount of time and there's still editing to do on top of that. So with that being said, you guys, um, please let me know how you guys felt about this gameplay down in the comment section below. Also, you guys, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, hit that notification bell so that you can be informed every time we drop another video. Next time, Bay will be here, but he is not here today. But with that being said, you guys, I'm Boo, and I will see you guys for another gameplay. All right, y'all. Bye.